Ciao, I'm Marianne Esposito. Today on Ciao Italia, warming up with soup. I've got some beautiful looking clams here today. So I'm going to use them to make a fish stew in the style of Sardinia. And as we go along, I will tell you what I mean by that. So you wanna start with some clams, but you also wanna have some other fish. So in Sardinia, of course, they would have local fish, so I'm using local fish here. So we've got some shrimp, we've got squid, and we've got some cod. But first, we're going to cook the clams. So the first thing you wanna do is really scrub them well, clean them, if there are any beards, you pull them off, and now we're ready to cook. One thing about clams, you want to make sure that none of them are open or cracked. If they are, you have to get rid of them. So we've got two pounds. Put them in a saute pan. And then I add a sprig or two of parsley tied with kitchen string right on the top and some wine. Just enough to coat the bottom of the pan. This is going to help us give uh, the sauce that we're going to make with the uh, with the clam juice. So you turn it on, you cover it, you wait until those clams open, and that's going to take about five minutes or so. And then we are going to drain them and save the juices. The thing about fish and seafood is that you want to make sure that it's very very fresh. So this is a pound of cod, and I'm using cod because, of course, I live in New England, and this is what you can get. So you want to get the fish that's local to you. So we're making this fish stew in the style of Sardinia. We can't really duplicate the flavors because we don't live in Sardinia and we don't have their local seafood. But when, when I was in Sardinia, especially when I was in Cagliari, uh, I visited with my friends Mario and Julia and we ate fish stews and all kinds of seafood all the time that I was there. So this is inspired by them. So you want to cut up the cod into chunks. It's going to shrink a little bit when it cooks, so don't cut it too small. So here's our cod. I'm going to put it in a bowl. And then with that, we've got some squid. Yes. Tiny ones, look at those little tiny ones. And actually that's good because the smaller they are, the more tender they are. So you just wanna cut those up into rings. Not too thin, you know, they can be about a quarter of an inch. And these are gonna cook very quickly. I know there are people who just shy away from eating squid, but there are so many recipes in Italian cooking that use them, not only for a fish stew, but stuffed, fried calamari, which everybody gets when they're in a restaurant in the States. So if you can find them, use them. If you can't find a calamari squid, then use something else. Substitute another fish if you want to. You could use, you could use salmon with this. You could use halibut. Just about any good fresh fish will do. So there's the squid, and that was a half a pound of squid. So now we have to cook these separately because they're gonna cook at different times. Then we're going to add the squid. That's not gonna take long. But the shrimp are gonna take the least amount of time, so then we're gonna add that. And the clams will already be cooked. So now we're going to check those clams. Well, yes, they are cooked as you can see. See how they've opened? Now if any have not opened, you have gotten rid of those. So once you have all of this, now you want to strain this through cheesecloth because you want to save that juice. So through cheesecloth, get them into your bowl. And then you have to let them cool a little bit before you can handle them. So you get rid of the parsley. And once you can handle them, then you want to just take them out like that. Like that, see? So let's let those cool and we'll work on the soup part of this. So two pounds of clams is going to give you about a cup of cooked. And these are really nice beauties. They're nice and soft. You may want to save a couple for garnish. I'll save a couple for garnish. And then what you want to do is get rid of that cheesecloth. 
but don't get rid of that juice. I used the cheesecloth to strain the juice in case there was any sediment or sand in it. But that's flavor, so we're gonna add that later when we make the soup. So I'm gonna set that aside. And now we're gonna build the soup. So we have our clams, which are cooked. We've got our squid, we've got our cod, and we've got our shrimp. Next thing is onions and garlic. So let me chop up some garlic for this. You want about three cloves. And soups like this, stews, this is actually called cassola sarda. Cassola sarda. And the name cassola comes from the pot that the soup is cooked in. So cassola sarda. And if you've ever been to Sardinia, you know how colorful not only the food is, but the pottery, the dishes, the markets, everything's very, very colorful. All right, so there is our garlic. That was a couple of cloves. So now we're gonna add some olive oil to our pan and get our onions in. So you want one onion, a couple of cloves of garlic, and some olive oil. Now if you really wanted to get a hint of Sardinian flavor in that, you could use a Sardinian olive oil. But anyway, so here's an, an onion. And you can find regional Italian olive oil just by, you know, going to the store, going to an, an Italian provision store, or even online. So we're going to get the onion soft. You know, and once you have this going, it really doesn't take long for to make this, this stew, this soup, this cassola sarda. And it is even better the next day. The flavors just mingle nicely. So we're gonna give this um, sea salt, fine salt, a little bit of pepper. And I'm gonna add a little heat to this because uh, I, like, uh, I like hot red pepper in this. And when my friends from Sardinia made this, wow, you had to, you had to have something near you like dairy because it was really, really hot. So when the onions start to look a little soft, that's when we can add our garlic. So here's our garlic. We're going to add that. Go in. And with that, we're going to add a little heat, some hot red pepper flakes, a piacere, however hot you like it, and mix those in. And I wish you could be here because now the smell is just starting to be intoxicated, just with the onions and the garlic. The pan seems a little bit dry. You can always add a little bit more olive oil. So I'm just gonna add a dab more of oil before I put the fish in. So now we're gonna start with the first fish. Lower your heat a little bit. And that's the cod. So here's the cod. And as I say, fish does not take very long to cook. And you don't want to jar it too much, so you don't want to, you don't want to move it around too much. So you put the cover on, and you let that cook, maybe for about four minutes. Let's check the cod. So you see it's starting to turn white, and I know that's the right point to add the squid. So there's the squid bodies they go in. Again, don't, don't mess around with it too much. Just, just let it sit in there. Put the cover back on. Another four minutes. All right, now you can see that the squid has gone from that dark pink color to a light pink color. So now we can add the shrimp. That was a pound of shrimp, medium size. Pound of shrimp. I know, this really is gonna be a hefty thing. And then when the shrimp start to turn pink, we add the clams. All right, the shrimp are starting to take on a little pinkish look there, so now we can add those clams. Remember, that was two pounds, and look what it cooked down to. Just a few, now they're cooked. So now we need to add the liquid to this. So for that, we need passata. And passata are pureed tomatoes. So you need about three cups of passata. You can either make your own, and I show you how to do this in one of the episodes of Ciao Italia, or 
you can go to the store and buy passata. So you add that, and oh, let's not forget the clam juice. So we add that because we want to thin down that passata. That's about enough. And now we want sale pepe, so a little bit more pepper, a little bit more salt, plus we're going to correct the seasonings at the end before we eat this. So now once you have this well mixed, what you want to do is bring it to a boil, but look at how nicely all those pieces stayed together because we didn't go around trying to mix everything so 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 uh, vigorously. So you want the, the uh, fish to stay in chunks. So we're going to bring this to a gentle boil and then we're going to lower the heat and simmer this for about five to eight minutes. That's it. It's done. Let's make the fregola. All right, so this is the Sardinian part of this recipe, which kind of makes it quasi-authentic, because this is fregola, fregola. It's a semolina. It's a little tiny pasta made with just water and flour, and the Sardinians roll it into tiny, tiny little balls. It really originated in North Africa. So this is going to be the base for the soup. You could use bread if you want to, but I think the fregola makes a really nice addition. So we've got some garlic in olive oil. That was one clove of garlic and I've got a couple tablespoons of olive oil. And the thing about fregola is we don't want to boil it first. We want to fry it first, just like you would do risotto. So I'm going to put it in and by frying it, not only it, the, the flavors of the oil and the garlic are absorbed by the fregola and it gives it a really nice toasty kind of taste to the dish. So you, this is used for many, many things. Not only for soup, but it's used to go with fish, with vegetables. So you just want to toast it just a couple minutes until it absorbs that olive oil. And it starts to just give off like a little crackling sound. So we're just going to have to wait a couple seconds. So once you have that, we're going to give this a little parsley, some flat leaf Italian parsley. Sometimes they add saffron to this. Then we want some water, about four cups. You want the fragola to absorb all of that. I'm going to wait and see how much more I need to put in. And some lemon juice, lots of lemon juice, about a half a cup. Bring this up to the boil. When it comes to the boil, you lower the heat, cover it, and let it cook until all of the liquid is absorbed. Then we're ready to put the soup together. Don't you love my little arrangement here of asparagi asparagus? Yes, because you know when you make soups, you should always think about cooking with vegetables that are in season. So this is a springtime soup. So to make the asparagus soup, you want to get yourself a nice bunch of asparagus. And when you go to the store, there are telltale tips. First of all, you look at the tips and you make sure that they're closed. See, if they're sprayed open, you know that that's old. And then you just want to listen for that snap. If it's too soft, it's old and it will not snap. So that's a good thing to look for. And also look for the fact that the asparagus is standing in water. Usually when you buy it in a grocery store, it's standing on a bed of ice. So when you bring it home, you should really put it in some water and put it in the refrigerator until you're ready to use it. So a lot of people like to peel the asparagus because they come in different thicknesses. This is fairly thin, pencil asparagus, I call this. So I'm not going to peel this. I'm just going to break it at the break point. See, all you have to do is just break it at that break point. And what are you going to do with these pieces that you've got in your hand? Well, they're a little rubbery and tough, so I would put them in your compost or just, you know, get rid of them. So really, really fresh asparagus has that nice snap to it. A lot of asparagus in Italy is also grilled, so it has a nice smoky taste to it. It's used with mixed vegetables. And it's great in a soup like this. So we're going to combine the asparagus today with some arborio rice. But we're not going to cook the rice like we do for risotto. No, we're going to boil it in some chicken stock. 
So this is a very fast soup, and I think it's something that even kids would like. So I have about a pound of pencil-thin asparagus. If you get the chunkier version and you want to peel the stem, well, then you can do that. There is no rule that says that you can't do that. So then we're going to cut this up now into small pieces for the soup. About an inch, I would say, inch pieces, one inch pieces. So there are our stems. Here's our asparagus. And get it all facing one way. I know it seems anal, but, and then just give it a cut. That's all there is to it. So that goes on a plate. Miss that one. And now we're going to flavor this with some butter, onions, and tomato paste. I have a couple tablespoons of butter melting in this saute pan and one onion that's been minced. So that's going in. And I want to flavor this mixture with tomato paste. I love to do that with onions because it really develops a flavor. It's a nice flavor base. So when you buy tomato paste, make sure you're buying a good brand, a good Italian brand. And I like to use the tubes instead of the jars or the cans because it's easier to store. So when the onion starts to look a little wilty, we're going to give this a squirt, about a tablespoon, a good tablespoon, of rich tomato paste. And mix that with the onions. Plus this is going to add some nice color to the soup as well. So get that, get the onions all mixed. And I often use the paste like this as a base for tomato uh, sauce. When I'm doing sauce, I'll do the onions and the garlic in tomato paste to just kind of bring out the flavors of everything. Plus it's pretty. All right, we're gonna give that some salt and pepper. And salt. Now I'm going to add the asparagus right in there. I'm going to cook that down before we put it in the soup. Mix that with the onion. And I'm going to add a little water to this. Or you could use chicken stock. About a half a cup. All we want to do is get this asparagus tender. Well, that's not going to take very long. With the asparagus, we're going to add some arborio rice. Now, you know that rice as the rice that is used for making risotto. It's a real short grain rice. It absorbs a lot of liquid. And when you make risotto, you have to fry the rice first in a little butter and onions, and then you start adding the liquid a little bit at a time. We're not doing any of that for this soup. We are using the arborio, but we're going to boil it in some chicken broth. So here we have about six cups of hot chicken broth, either you bought the broth at the grocery store or you made your own. And we're going to add about three quarters of a cup of the arborio rice to the boiling broth. Get it in. Stir it. Bring it back to the boil and cook it until it's tender. This is going to take about maybe 10 minutes. So the top goes on and when it's cooked, then we're going to add our asparagus to the broth. Cut 
cassola sarta. This is that wonderful Sardinian style soup that I made for you today. Remember, it had a variety of fish and shellfish. We had cod, we had shrimp, we have squid, we have clams in a wonderful tomato based broth. And there it is, all ready to eat. It reminds me of fun days in Sardinia. And then, here's a nice soup, something that's really light and refreshing, a good springtime soup that we made with asparagus and onions, a little bit of tomato paste, chicken broth, and arborio rice. And now we can give it a sprinkling of grated Parmigiano Reggiano cheese. So today we warmed up with soup. So there you have it. Two soups for you to try in your kitchen. Ten years ago, I was standing right here in Piazza Grande, in the center of Gubbio, for the Festa dei Ceri. That is the most happening event in this town on May 15th. And it looks pretty serene right now. If you look around, there aren't too many people around. But on May 15th, you were like a sardine in a can because everybody was here in the center waiting for the race of the three saints. The first thing you need to know about La Festa dei Ceri is that there's nothing like it in America. And I mean nothing, except maybe New Year's Eve in Times Square. But even that doesn't hold a candle to what happens in the medieval town of Gubbio every May 15th. In New York City, Americans celebrate the future. In Gubbio, the Eugubini celebrate the past with a race, not between people, but between saints, Santubaldo, Antonio, and Giorgio. You don't have to be an Eugubino or even from Umbria to enjoy this special day. But if you are, then this small town acts like a magnet and pulls you back year after year to gather in the Piazza Grande, shoulder to shoulder, elbow to elbow, and sometimes body to body. But all breathing stops when the Palazzo dei Consoli doors open and Sant'Ubaldo races out. That's not a wooden coffin the racers are carrying. It's called un cero, or candle, and it weighs a thousand pounds. And that tiny little statue on top that looks like a friendly Santa Claus? That's Santubaldo himself. Next out races San Giorgio. Then finally, San Antonio. Now it's time to bless each saint with holy water. Now, hold on to your hat. Here comes the best part. Before the race begins, the various teams parade the cherry up and down the narrow streets so that the citizens of Gubbio can pin money to their clothes, touch them with reverence, give them a pat on the back, and encourage them to do their best. The cherry are so heavy that the teams have to change runners every few minutes. Once they've finished here, the racers will run up and down the twisting eye of the needle streets of Gubbio, then climb the narrow road leading up Mount Ingino, where they'll finally come to a rest at the summit at the church of Santubaldo. What a privilege for us to be in the midst of this reverend frenzy and to see what La Corsa dei Ceri means to the people of Gubbio. All too soon, the saints will once again be returned to their resting places, but the singing and dancing and joy for this day continues long into the night while plans are being made for next year's race and the anticipation of who will win La Corsa dei Ceri will build once again in the souls and hearts of the Eugubini.